Do you know what NOX is and how it's generated? I'm going to sound really stupid dumb here, but I have absolutely no idea. NOX. <laughs> nitrogen oxide. Right. And this is a byproduct of every single lean burn engine, regardless of whether it is petrol or diesel. Every single engine available in a motor car today is a lean burn design. And the idea is it gets the most bang out of the least fuel possible. Right. Which is great from an environmental point of view because you're not using as much fuel, you are generating less carbon dioxide emissions, you're getting greater efficiency, and when you put your accelerator down, you really get that feeling of that buzz of acceleration from a one litre engine, which you can turn. It's turbocharged, and you've got a, a pretty decent system in there. You still get that little clip. Not as much as you need one6 but you can still get it. Now, the problem with lean burn is once you've got all that the, the bang done, you, you know the engine process. Um, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Mm, yeah. yeah. So in the suck and the squeeze section, you've got fuel and air mixed together quite nicely. And then the bang goes. Right. And at the end of that bang, you've got a very, very hot chamber. We're looking at close to a thousand degrees. Okay. Um, so you've got the bang, you've now got a very compressed set of gases in a very hot environment, so around or over a thousand degrees centigrade. Right. And you've got these oxygen molecules that are not quite gone. So the oxygen then attaches to nitrogen and creates nitrogen oxide. Because 70% of the air is nitrogen. Right. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of nitrogen there. And that's what the oxygen attaches to because it's not being burned fully, it's not burned cleanly. But this is true of all engines, petrol or diesel. But as it shows, it's not that simple. It's not as easy as diesel is evil, petrol better. Because there are circumstances where petrol is worse than diesel. See, wouldn't it be good if there was an alternative? I was just thinking this. What if we had an alternative? With LPG? When you're looking under the bonnet, it shouldn't be that obvious, especially if it's a factory fit like this one is. To find the differences, you've really got to look. So there's, on this one, there's an extra set of injectors here, which feed in and go into the, go into the cylinders of the engine. Standard four cylinder engine on this one, so it's not a, it's a fairly standard LPG installation. Key things to remember with these is you've got an additional fuel filter and it needs to be serviced as regularly, not more so, than your regular petrol engine. And it really does need to go to an LPG specialist. Other than that, there are one or two ECUs dotted around which are in addition to the regular engine ECUs and connecting to the wiring harnesses. That's one of the reasons why, if you don't get this factory fitted, it is a specialist installation, as well as the pressurized components as well. But generally, for the main engine itself, there's no change. Um, certainly not from a servicing point of view and a maintenance point of view. The only thing you've got to watch out for is the additional injectors if you need to change something like an inlet manifold. If you do lose part of your space in your car for an additional tank. Now, this one's a 55 litre tank and it's taking up the spare wheel area. Now, some people will have uh, a tank in the boot, which takes up quite a bit of space, but it depends on your, on your need. What size tank do you really need? And 55 litre will get you quite far. And when I had mine, it was around about 30 pounds to do 300 miles. So that's 10p a mile in terms of fuel. And that wasn't too bad considering that 30 pounds in petrol would have probably got me around about 150 to 200, if I was looking, depending on the sort of mileage I'm doing. But pottering around town, I'd be getting 300 miles out of it, so it's not exactly the best driving conditions for fuel economy. 
just goes to show how cheap it can actually be. In fact, a lot of taxi firms are now switching from diesel to LPG for the various reasons. They can advertise themselves as greener and it's a lot cheaper for them to run. As I said, the only big disadvantage is you've got the second fuel tank, which means quite often you will wind up with your spare tyre in the boot, which we have on this one. Right, I have some questions. Okay. Um, one, a bit of a safety aspect. How safe is LPG than it's in your car? Well, um, LPG, as, as the L stands for, is liquid or liquefied petroleum gas. So we're looking at pressurized gas. Yeah. So the tank has to be incredibly strong and incredibly durable. So you we show this old tank in the boots there, in the boot space area. And it has to be strong, it has to be durable, it has to be able to withstand. Very, very not. So if you were in an accident where the, the rear was hit and the tank was in the crumple area, the tank would probably be scratched and that's about it. No, no, that's good to hear. And the other safety aspects, okay? When you're filling the car up, how easy and safe is it to do? Right. For filling the car up, you have a nozzle which clicks in, and then you'll turn it to lock in place and then pull a lever to make a seal. Without that seal in place, gas will not flow. Good, right, so there's no really potential cause of leakages of my tank to fill. Well, that's good. Um, boring bit out of the way, onto a bit of an exciting bit. What about power? Because we know this power. is a fairly powerful car. Yeah. Um, so Typical what sort of power am I going to be getting out of my LPG with this? Any losses you or gains? You will lose a little bit of power on LPG. Right. However, you're looking at a couple of horsepower. Right. Not massive. Yeah, that. yeah. You certainly won't notice it in a car like this. Swapping over your actual petrol and LPG. So if you're running on petrol at the moment, uh, you've got a little display down here. And it shows you LEDs there. So it shows you your fuel level. If it starts to go a bit low, it usually goes red. And if it's really low, it will flash. And you've got a button there where you can actually swap between the two. So I've now got it on petrol. Now it's on LPG. And it really is as simple as that. But the actual switchover won't, won't actually occur until the system primes itself and course the engines into operating temperature. So basically if I run out of one fuel, I can go straight to another one. You can, yeah. yeah. Um, so it'll work one way, if you're running on LPG and you run out of LPG, you go up to fuel, up to petrol. Uh, again, if you run out of petrol and you're, um, you've got LPG in the tank, you can switch over to LPG. Right, well I think we all that in mind. I think now's the time to actually see it being filled up, I think. Yeah. So, slightly different from your normal fuel that cap, but the separate one there that squeezes, that twists off. You have this one, which goes into place, turn it slightly, pull, and now that's locked. At which point, now push the button and let the gas flow. And look at that price. 58.9p a litre. It's a long time since I've seen litres go up faster than the pounds. Yep. So, once done, it's the process in reverse. A little bit of a gas flow when you come out, but that's it. Pop it back in and you're done. Now to go and pay. So from starting from cold, it's generally a good idea to do this with petrol. Now, you can on some LPG systems get a cold start without actually using petrol at all. However, this tends to glaze over the injectors. And as a result, you end up with problems with fuel flow. So. This is one of the reasons why petrol is used to start the car when it's cold. Right, so looking at everything we've seen, 
filling the car all the way in. What sort of benefits have we actually got from LCP? Well, it's actually Obviously, the beneficial benefits for the environment is it's a clean burn, so it's, it's practically zero particular matter, uh, and NOx as well is greatly reduced. The catalytic converter is going to be practically doing nothing. Yeah. A bit of a lazy cat, then. Yeah. yeah, like a typical cat. Yeah, yeah, like a typical cat, yeah. So I can see some really good points about having LPG. Yeah. Um, I can't really see no massive downsides against the upsides. To be there. Apart from needing specialist installation and again requiring servicing, we do have its own set of I would understand all them points because yeah. it's something you can't just take up on yourself. No. Really. I mean, it is one of those things you don't get anything free. So fuel efficiency doesn't come free, it comes with knots, it comes with particulate matter, it comes with lots of other things. So there are trade offs, whatever you do, even if you went all electric, there are still trade offs. Um, but you can get LPG added to most petrol engines for around 500 pounds upwards now. And if any government is really serious about clean motor, reducing emissions, they will be pushing LPG a lot more. Absolutely. It's less than half the price of fuel at the moment in this country in the UK. Um, it's, it's definitely less than half the price of petrol, way less than half the price of diesel. So to sum up, would you have an LPG car? Yes. Without no, that, that same car. And I think, if you pardon the foot here, I'm converted. <laughs>